Welcome to the third part of Lecture 5, Inverse Functions. It's called Inverting Functions, Single or Multivalued, and we'll also be talking about some examples at the end of the lecture. So inverse functions, well, all well-defined functions are single-valued because it's a map from a value of x to a value f of x. But having a well-defined function that is single-valued does not guarantee a well-defined inverse function because in many cases the inverse function is not single-valued. So we have to restrict to ranges where the inverse function is single-valued. So let's take an example the parabola, which is the curve given in red, y equals f of x equals x squared. It is single-valued, as indicated by each of the green points. When x is equal to a green value, there's only one red value lying above it. But the inverse has two values, as given by the brown line. When y is equal to the value where that brown line intersects, there are two x values that correspond to that y value. One at plus square root of y, and the other at minus square root of y. And there's no way to pick one or the other. One is never better than the other. One is not more valid than the other. They are both valid inverse functions. They simply are defined on different ranges. One is defined on the range where the x is positive, and the other is defined on the range where the x is negative. This result holds true for all of the trigonometric functions. Those are the most important ones that we have to pay attention to. And in those cases, we have to be very careful where we define the inverse ranges. In many cases, the inverse ranges will run from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. In some cases, they'll run from 0 to pi. And those are the sort of standard ranges that are used for defining the inverse of different trigonometric functions. But we're going to explore that particular situation in more detail in the next lecture, where I'll show you some pictures of what those inverse functions look like. For now, we're going to move on, having introduced the notion of an inverse function, to go on and do some examples that are just general examples related to derivatives and integrals. And they're things that you should know and you should have seen before, but they're a little bit subtle. So I want to make sure we take a moment to go over them and see whether or not you can recognize them and be successful at doing manipulations on your own. So our first example is going to be, let's differentiate the function a to the x. No, this is not e to the x, it's a to the x, where a is some number. How am I going to do that? Well, the easiest way is to go back to the definition of the exponential function e to the log a is equal to a, so a to the x is e to the x log a. The derivative of an exponential, I know how to differentiate. The derivative of an exponential is just the exponential multiplied by the derivative of its argument. The derivative of its argument, the argument being x log a, is just log a, so I'm going to get log a e to the x log a, and that indeed just equals log a a to the x. So it looks very similar to the situation with e to the x, and indeed, if I take a and set it equal to e, that log a term disappears because the logarithm of e is just equal to 1. And so then I would just get e to the x, which is the formula that you know and love. Example number 2. Let's say I had to integrate an integral x to the 4th minus a to the 4th over x squared plus a squared dx. Well, at first, by looking at that, it looks like that's an impossible integral to integrate. It's so complicated. How could I, how could I possibly do it? But if I recognize and think about my factoring, x to the 4th minus a to the 4th is x squared plus a squared multiplied by x squared minus a squared. You see I can cancel those two factors of x squared plus a squared in the numerator and denominator. And after doing that cancellation, I get the simpler form, x squared minus a squared dx. That's a polynomial. I can just integrate it. x cubed over 3 minus x a squared, and that's the answer to that integral. So in many cases, you won't have something that ends up being that simple. But in lots of situations where you're doing your own algebra, you may have this simplification lurking there, and you haven't recognized it. And so always be looking for situations where some kind of simple factorization actually helps you to work out results that will simplify your examples or the problems that you're working on even more than you might have originally thought they would do. Okay, we're going to now go to a somewhat more difficult example. We're going to integrate x over 1 minus x to the 4th. And I'd like you to pause the video and give it a try. 
If you're stuck, you can play forward. I'm going to give three hints, one after the other, and you can try again after each hint or until you've seen enough hints that you think, ah, okay, now I think I can try it. So let's pause the tape and give it a try. Okay, I can see that either you solve the problem or you're looking for the first hint. The first hint is that we can factorize 1 minus x to the fourth. Now, pause again and give it a try. Okay, if you're back again, then that wasn't enough. Well, I can, using that factorization, I can expand in partial fractions and get 1 over 1 minus x to the fourth is 1 half 1 over 1 plus x squared plus 1 over 1 minus x squared. That's our second hint. Now, if you haven't solved the problem yet, pause and using that hint, see if you can work it out. Okay, if you're here for the third hint, we're going to want to use the inverse chain rule. Pick u equals 1 minus x squared, then du is minus 2x dx. And you can do that change of variables in one of your integrals, and you do a similar one in the other integral, and that should allow you to integrate to get your final answer. So please pause and get that final answer if you have, are still stuck. If you were able to solve the problem, congratulations, way to go, and just keep watching forward. Okay, here's what the answer is. If you used all of those hints, you should have found that the integral dx, x over 1 minus x to the fourth, is equal to 1 fourth the logarithm of x squared plus 1 divided by x squared minus 1, which of course is going to hold when the absolute value of x is bigger than 1. Otherwise, you have a singularity, you have an infinity in the integral, and then you have to worry about how do you handle that infinity, and we're not going to talk about that at this point in time in the class.